non-flowering plants. Some plants do not use flowers to reproduce. These plants are called non-flowering plants. There are two main groups of non-flowering plants. One type uses seeds to reproduce, while the other type uses spores to reproduce. Gymnosperm. The non-flowering plants that use seeds are called gymnosperms. Gymnosperm means naked seeds. They are called this because their seeds are open to the air with no covering such as fruit or flowers. The conifer is one of the major groups of gymnosperm. Conifer. The word conifers means bearing cones. Most evergreen trees are conifers. This includes pine, fir, cypress, juniper, cedar, and redwood trees. Conifers are woody plants that include characteristics like needles, cones, and bark. They usually are triangular in shape. Conifers, needles or leaves. The leaves of conifers are their needles. The needles are tough, don't dry out, and will not easily fall off in high winds. This helps conifers to survive in cold, windy, and dry climates. On true pine trees, the needles are arranged and attached to the branches in clusters of two, three, or five needles per cluster. Spruce and fir trees have their needles attached individually to the branches. In spite of being called evergreens, conifers don't keep their needles forever. The loss of needles is normal and natural. Conifers will lose an old set of needles and grow a new set of needles back. They shed the needles located closest to the trunk first because these are the oldest needles. The needles turn yellow or brown first before dropping to the ground. If you take a peek, older evergreens don't have many needles located near the trunk of the tree. Different types of evergreens will drop their needles at different rates. For instance, most pine trees will shed every two to five years, while spruce trees hang on to them for five to seven years. Conifers. Cones. All conifers produce cones. The length of the cone can vary from tree to tree. For example, the sugar pine cones range in size from 8 inches long to more than 26 inches long. Conifers. Reproduction and life cycle. Conifers reproduce using their cones. Some cones are male and some are female. The female cones are hard and made up of scales attached to a center stalk. In between the overlapping scales, the seeds can be found. The male cones are usually smaller and softer spongy filling. They release pollen. This pollen is carried by the wind. If the pollen lands on a female cone, then the female cone will produce seeds. The hard scales of the female cone protect the new seeds as they grow. These seeds are wings, so when they are released by the cone, they will float in the wind until they reach the ground where they will then germinate and grow. Here you will see the life cycle of the white pine tree, which is a conifer. Spores. There are some non-flowering plants that don't produce seeds. Instead, they use spores to reproduce. Spores are tiny organisms that usually contain only a single cell. Plants that make spores produce huge numbers of them. Because they are so small and light, they can be dispersed by the wind to new locations where they can grow. Spore-producing plants include plants such as mosses and ferns. Ferns. One type of spore-producing plant is the fern. Scientists estimate that some species of ferns have been around for over 350 million years. They are vascular plants, meaning they have tissue that helps to carry water and nutrients throughout the plant, but they do not produce seeds. Ferns, reproduction and life cycle. Instead of seeds, ferns produce spores. These spores can be found on their leaves that are called fronds. They look like brown spots in casings on the underside of their fronds. At some point, the casings dry out and the spores are released into the air. The spores are then carried to the ground where they germinate into tiny, usually heart-shaped plants called a prothallus. This plant is anchored to the ground by rhizoids, or root-like hairs. 
Under moist conditions, fertilization occurs on the prothallus's lower surface. When fertilization occurs, a zygote forms and develops into an embryo. The embryo eventually grows larger and becomes a fern. This diagram shows the life cycle of a fern. Moss. Moss is a type of plant that is non-vascular and does not produce seeds. There are over 12,000 different species of mosses. Without a vascular system, these mosses cannot grow very large. They are rarely taller than one inch high and will tend to grow together in clumps. These clumps are actually carpets of individual plants that grow together as a group. They use each other to stay upright. Moss. Mosses also grow in groups because they do not have a vascular system to bring them water. Growing in clumps help them retain water. You will usually find them in moist areas out of the direct sunlight. Most mosses also have a waxy covering across their bodies that helps keep water from evaporating. Mosses do not have typical roots like most plants, but instead anchor themselves to rock and soil with short, hair-like growths called rhizoids. Did you know? The picture below is a plant called Spanish moss found growing on trees. Many people simply call it moss, but despite its name, it is actually not a moss at all. It is a flowering plant. It produces seeds and flowers. Moss, reproduction and life cycle. Mosses don't have flowers or seeds, but use spores to reproduce. They have two ways they can reproduce. One way is the plants produce two structures, one male and one female, usually on different plants. Fertilization occurs as water helps the structures join together. There are tiny hook structures that rise above the moss carpet that contain spores and capsules. The spores are eventually released. When they land on moist surfaces, they can then grow into new male and female plants. The second way reproduction occurs in moss is when any part of the plant breaks off and regenerates to create a new moss plant. Here you can see a diagram of the life cycle of moss. 